Hello everyone and welcome to the exercise 5 of the Kima Runtime in our Dev Oktoberfest event. My name is Daniel Severo and I'm going to show you and explain how to create extensions on Kima to get additional services. In the previous exercise, you had, to cre you had created and exposed two services via OAuth 2 and it was authenticated by this. Also creating client credentials. In this exercise 5, you are going to learn how to add an add-on to your Kima cluster. We will show you how to do this with a Redis add-on. With the add-on added to your Kima cluster, we are going to provision an instance of these Redis services. The Redis service instance will be binded to our previous serverless function, the number generator services, and we will store there the numbers generator for each call to create an history that can be consumed later. Let's get started. We will continue to use the CLI to work and to create and deploy our objects to Kima. For organization purpose, we will use the same project, number generator service, to create and store our deployment files. As we are going to install the Redis add-on to our Kima cluster, let's create a new deployment YAML file to do this. Create a new file named redis addon.yaml inside the source folder. First, you can just type touch redis addon.yaml to create an empty file. Next step, use the VI text editor and we're going to edit the file via redis addon.yaml. Let's type the content of the file. For this deployment file, we are calling a Kima API addon schema project.io, adding a new object of type addons configuration. In the metadata section, we need to inform the name of the add-on configuration, Redis add-on, and you can redefine the namespace. We are continuing to use our Dev Oktoberfest namespace. This spec is the most important section of this deployment file. We are setting the repository tag, informing a URL that points to the Redis add-on definition inside the Kima GitHub project. The index testing YAML file contains the information that the Kima clusters need to provision a Redis service. Save your file and get back to the CLI. On the command prompt, type the following command to deploy the add-on configuration. kubectl apply dash f redis addon dot yaml setting the namespace as dev Oktoberfest. Press enter. Kima starts to read, validate the file, and immediately starts to apply the configuration. The command line response says that the Redis add-on object has been created. You can check the status of the creation of the add-on running the following command. kubectl get add-ons, the name of the add-on, in this case redis-add-on, setting the namespace dev Oktoberfest with the output format JSON path parsing for the attribute status.face. So in this command, we have received the ready as the status phase for the Redis add-on. See, the status returned is ready, and now we can start to create a new instance of the Redis service. Now, Go to the Kima UI console and click on the left side of the menu on the catalog. Then you can access the add-ons tab. Here you can see the Redis add-on already installed on your Kima cluster. Click on it and let's see what's there. Here you can see a brief description of the add-on and the properties that can be used to instantiate a new one. Let's go back to our CLI and continue to create the instance of the service and then binding 
to our Lambda serverless. Now, back to the CLI, let's edit the Redis add-on YAML file created previously and we will append to the end the creation of a new Redis add-on instance. On the prompt of the command, type vi redis add-on yaml file. Go to the end of the file and put your editor and edition modes. Add the three dashes that separate the instructions from one object to another, and then type the following information to your file. Explaining a little bit more of the informations declared here we have. So, we are telling Tokima to call the API service catalog.kubernetes to create a new object of kind service instance. In the metadata information, we set the name of the instance as number with this service. For the purpose of the exercise, this name makes sense, as we are going to bind this instance of read these services with our previous Lambda number generator service created before. Inside the spec session, we set the service plan to the value micro. That means that this instance of Redis will use the in-memory persistence. An additional information set here is related to the image pool. And for that case, the Docker image of the Redis will be always be pulled to create the Redis instance. Save the file and go back to CLI. We are going to use again the kubectl command to apply these chains made on the Redis add-on YAML file. Type kubectl apply dash Redis add-on YAML file informing the dev Oktoberfest namespace. The output of the command is that the add-on was unchanged and the service instance has begun to be created. We can check the stats of the service instance creation. This process can take more time as it needs to be downloading the image and configure everything. Type the following command. kubectl get service instance is that the type of object that we're getting description, the name numbers redis services, the new redis services created on the dev Oktoberfest namespace. We need to ask that the, J, the output of the description be in the JSON path, and then we can parse the conditions to get the status of the resource created. Type this and press enter. The last condition to the resource status needs to be ready equals true. You see that's not created yet, and it can take some time. Now, let's try again to check the stats of the provision again. Now, everything is okay. Done, you have succeed, and you have created a new Kima add-on and provisioned a new instance of it. And now, we have created the Redis add-on on the Kima cluster. We also have created a new instance of Redis as a service on Kima. To bind any service to another, we need to create a service binding object into Kima. In this exercise, we will be binding to our Redis service that later will be used to bind our Lambda service. Let's edit the Redis add-on YAML file again. In this file, at the end, we will append the creation of the new service binding object. Type vi redis add-on yaml file. In the editor, we're going to create this object with this specification. Let's check the configuration created here. We are defining a new object of kind of service binding, and in his metadata section, we have to define the name of the object. For this exercise, we have set the name to numbers redis service binding as it makes reference to our number redis service. In the spec session we need to define inside the instance ref tag 
the name of the Redis service that you have created before, the number Redis service. Save the file and get back to the command line. Use the, command, the following command to apply the new configuration to Kimo. kubectl apply dash f redis add-on yaml file setting the dev Oktoberfest as a namespace. Great! We can check if the service binding were successfully created. Type the following command kubectl get service binding number redis service binding setting the dev Oktoberfest as a namespace. We can pass the output in a JSON format. Then we can pass a regular expression that filter the status to us. The last condition in the status should be ready equals true. Press enter. And voila, the service binding object is created. As we have created the service binding object that now is really attached to the Redis service instance. Now it's time to connect our Lambda service with this Redis service instance. Let's edit the Redis add-on YAML file again, and we will append to the end the creation of new service binding object. Type on the prompt, command prompt vi Redis add-on YAML file. Let's create the following configuration at the bottom of this file. Let's get deeper into details of the configuration. We have set in the metadata section the name of numbers redis binding function. As this object is binding the redis service instance to one serverless functions that we have created before. The spec dot service binding ref and the spec dot used by fields are required. Spec dot Service binding ref is configured with the name of service binding that you have just created. And spec.used by is set to the function numbers generator service, our lambda that generates random numbers. The usage by has also the kind property that in this case is set to the kind serverless function. This combination here will make Kima define how secrets the credentials to connect on Redis service should be injected to your function when creating a service binding. We still have the spec.parameters.envprefix.name. It is optional, but we are adding the prefix as redis underscore in this exercise. It will add this prefix to whole environments variables injected into the secrets and into our serverless functions when we are creating a new service binding. Save the file and get back to the command prompts. Use the following command to apply the new configuration to Kima. kubectl apply dash f redis add-on yaml file setting the dev Oktoberfest as namespace. Let's check if the service binding usage was created successfully. The last condition in the service binding usage status should, st should be the states ready equals true. Type in the following comments. kubectl get service binding usage numbers redis binding function setting the dev Oktoberfest as a namespace with the JSON path as the output. Note again, we are using the same regular expression to extract the status of an object being created. Please press enter. You see, everything is okay. You have created the service binding usage objects. Now, our number generator service lambda can use and consume the Redis instance. In the command line, we can also extract the secret credentials that were generated by the service binding. Type the following comment in the prompt. kubectl get secret numbers redis service binding. In this case, we are going to put the output using Go template. 
in using our regular expression that can parse the output decoding the credential using base64 decode command. Press enter. Here it is. These are the credentials created to this service binding. Let's see in the Kima UI console how everything is configured now. Click on the left side in the functions menu, select the numbers generator service and click on it to see how it's configured. At the bottom of the function definition, you can see that Kima has injected the secret credentials to the Lambda functions. There are three variables, Redis hosts, Redis port, and Redis Redis password. These variables can be used in your Lambda code to connect it to Redis services and consume the database. It's great to see how Kima can provide to us this flexibility on the configurations and the secure that services to no store, no plain text passers, and no passers show it. Now we are good to go and change our Lambda to connect on Redis service. Let's edit our first deployment YAML file created before that contains our Lambda services. In the prompt of the command, type vi deployment.yaml file. This is the search folder. Find for the number generator services inside the file and go to the search section. Let's add to the beginning of the code the variable client that requires the Redis dependence. With this code, Redis are going to create the client object to connect on our Redis service instance. Type the following const client equals redis.createClient. With this, we will pass some parameters host, port, and password. This is the code that will guarantee the service to connect on our Redis database. Note that we are using the environment variables that were injected by the service binded object created previously. Redis is a key value database, so go to the end of the function. And now that we have the connection, let's add the last generated numbers to the Redis database. Declare the following. We are going to use a key with a random just date in a ISO string format. Declare key equals new date dot to ISO string. So let's set the first value into this Redis database. We are using as a key, just for example purpose, the current date in an ISO format. When the key value is inserted on Redis, we are just simply logging the result of the insertion. As we are using the Redis dependence here, we need to add it to our dependence sections of the descriptor. Save the file and let's apply the Lambda change to our Akima cluster. Type the following command, kubectl apply dash f deployment yaml file setting dev Oktoberfest as a namespace. The Lambda service will start to build and deploy this new version. While the Lambda is being deployed, let's ensure that you can easily test that our Redis is being populated. Let's create a new Lambda function that just return all the content of the Redis service instance. Edit your deployment YAML file in the source folder and let's write the following code. At the end of the file, add those three dashes to separate those functions. You can see here that you are creating a new Lambda services with the name number history service that you be created on the same DevOctoberfest namespace. We're setting some labels and selectors here, and you are adding to this a dependence library named IO Redis that will scan 
our data inside the Redis instance. In the source code, we can see the same process to connect on Redis instance using the environment variables provided by the injection of the service binding usage. Redis port, Redis host, and Redis password. When you create a new object named Redis using IO Redis library, we can connect on our instance and then we can use the redis.keys to retrieve all keys that are stored on our Redis instance. And to show the values, we can just use Redis <clears throat> mget command passing the whole keys that were retrieved. This is not an example for production, but for the purpose of this exercise, it will work. We will show and return at the end the whole files in the content of our Redis instance. Let's save the file and apply this new service to Kima. Use the kubectl apply -f deployment YAML file setting devoctoberfast in the namespace. We can see and check if the function was already created using the comment kubectl get function. The name of the function numbers dash history dash service setting the devoctoberfast as a namespace. Great, it's already created. Our number history servicing is using the process env properties to connect it on our Redis service instance. But until now, we didn't provide this bind to the number history service yet. Let's create this binding in the same way as we did before for the number generator. Open an edit the file redis addon.yaml. Put it on edit mode and go to the end. Add the three dashes as separator, following with the service binding usage new object. Here we have the same declaration of the service binding usage object created before, but we are changing a new name because is that a new one? And the used by entry telling to the schema to bind to our last number history service created. Let's save the file and apply the configuration. Use the kubectl command to apply it. Let's type kubectl apply dash f redis addon dot yaml setting dev octoberfest as a namespace. Done new object created. Now the function is created, it is bound, but not exposed yet. For the purpose of this exercise, let's configure the new service to be accessed without restrictions. In your command prompt, let's edit again the file securityfunctions.yaml. Open file with your editor and add the following lines at the end. With this configuration, we are exposing the service with the name number history service with no handlers, allowing any get HTTP connection. Save the file and let's apply the new rule to the schema. Type the following comment kubectl apply dash f security functions dot yaml setting the namespace to dev octoberfest. Done, it's created. Remember that when you are working with the minikube, any new service must be declared into your etc host file. Locally, to be able to resolve this name, let's add this new entry. Open again your etc hosts file and let's add the new number history service to the minikube IP.
save the file and let's test it using curl command type curl dash i key the name of our service running on a minikube with kima local dns good great it's running this tests both services running together, the generation of numbers and the history numbers. Hi, now that everything was created, our services, our Redis instance, our service bindings, our Lambda to generate the history, let's try to test everything together. Let's open our web app microservice number generator and let's generate some numbers. Click on the button sometimes. Now, in the other browser, let's open our new history service and see if it's re returning the generated number as a history. Great, it's running OK. Awesome. Click one more time and compare if the last number generator are being showed. Let's refresh our history service. Great! Congratulations, you have succeeded to the end of our exercise 5. Thank you for joining us in the Dev Oktoberfest and thanks for practicing our exercise 5. You can reach out to us with your questions or any problem that you have executing the exercises. Go to our repository of the event and create a new issue. Stay in touch.